Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we are painting anemones and it is day 16 of our 30 days of watercolor flowers and I cannot wait to show it to you so let's get started. The way that I paint loose white anemones is I start with the center. So they have a big black center and I leave a little bit of white space for highlight and then I add all of the little dots for the end of the stamen all the way around the center. I keep it really loose and I don't want this black color to be super watery. I want it to be in between a dry pigment and a watery pigment because I want it to blend up into our white petals, but I don't want it to completely bleed and take over the white. Um, now I'm just adding the little stamen and keeping it really thin with the tip of my brush. Now I've washed off my brush and it's really wet and I'm creating this petal shape and then right at the end I'm going down and touching those little dots we've created at the end of our stamen. And I'm continuing through the whole process to get more water on my brush, creating very loose petals going around and around and touching down onto those little dots every now and then. So we want our petals to be watery but not too watery kind of in between so that we can have the blending and the bleeding of the black up into the petals, but again, it doesn't overtake the whole entire petal. And we need the bleeding in this case because to paint white petals, you need some color. But the good thing about white is it really isn't totally pure, you know, no color, totally white. It has some color in it. So we're letting that gray bleed up into the petals to give a really nice soft color. Now I'm also going through and dragging some of that color from those stamen and the dots and bringing it up into the petals because we don't want it to be completely devoid of color up towards the tip of the petal. White can have lots of different colors in it and so I'm adding a little bit of purple but you feel free to add whatever color that you want. White reflects the color that's around it so I'm imagining it's in a field with maybe some purple wildflowers, and so it has a little bit of the purple flowers reflected in it. Now we're going to paint an anemone that is more viewed from the side. So I'm only going to be painting half of the center and half of the stamen because we're going to imagine that the other side is covered by petals. So again, I am taking a wet brush and I am creating petals and then touching down onto those little dots to let the color bleed up into the petals. Now that I have painted my semicircle of petals like usual, I'm doing those really short, small, angular petals towards the front to give the illusion that this petal doesn't come out fully but it is curved up and we're looking at it from the back of the petal and we're looking at it at an angle. So it's curved up and covering the center. I don't want it to touch the center because I don't want the center to bleed onto the top of that petal because that's where the highlight of that petal would be. And bleeding into it would suggest that it's connected and I want it to look disconnected because it's covering the center. And so I'm adding a little bit of color to the back of that petal. I'm also adding color to the rest of the petal with purple and bringing color up from the stamen like I did before on the other flower. This part is a little repetitive, so I'm speeding through it, but I am just adding purple and gray tones and adjusting everything until I like the way it looks. And now I'm going to paint an anemone that has no center visible and all of the petals are facing upward. And with this flower, because there's no center to have color bleed into the flowers, we are painting with a gray color really lightly and then we can come back through and add some darker tones to help it blend in to create that shadowy look and to give a base color to the flower. Okay, and now we get to start with the greenery. 
And because this flower has no visible center, I am going to want the green to bleed into the flower because we can see the point where the petals are meeting the stem. And I'm creating these little green offshoots that come off here. The nice thing about anemones is they are considered wildflowers. They're in the wildflower family, I guess. So um, they can be really wild with the greenery and more sporadic and random and loose and organic. And so that's what I'm going to do here is just really create these more random and loose shapes for the leaves and the stem and everything that is connected to them. To paint these really loose and organic leaves, I'm doing the two-stroke method with my brush, and I'm just kind of wiggling my brush down as I go. So the two-stroke method is where I do one stroke, leave white space in the middle, and then another stroke on the other side. And I just continue throughout the piece to create these really organic, wiggly, wild leaves wherever I feel that there is an awkward space or it would really help the balance in the composition. And right here what I'm creating is a bud. And so I found a perfect place for an offshoot to come straight up into this little gap right here that would be too small for a leaf. So I thought it'd be perfect for a little bud. And I just curve my brush around in a circular shape to create that white space that is also curved, which helps create the illusion of highlights and shape. And I turned my paper here so I could get a better angle to show you, but I am again painting one of those wild and loose leaves, this time above the anemones to give a lot of uh, movement to the piece, have your eye go up into that corner. And now I'm going through with a darker pigment of a greenish blue to add the contrasting green which helps to really define shadows and definition. We don't want our painting to look super flat. So adding a contrasting color can always help your composition just pop. Now we're almost done, but before we finish, I want to add a purpley gray color to the petals as well to help give the petals even more definition and so that they don't look flat either. And now that we have finished practicing our anemone flower, we can add it to our watercolor flower guide. And don't forget the anemones come in so many different colors, but I thought it was a great way to show how to paint a white anemone today. Because white flowers can be tricky. Thank you so much for being here today and painting anemones with me. I appreciate you being a part of this watercolor guide journey with me. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow for day 17. Bye.